Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Q Flash button on your Gigabyte motherboard. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to use the Q Flash button on your Gigabyte motherboard. This particular version is the A520MH, but this applies to pretty much any board that has the Q Flash button on the back of the IO shield. Now some of the things you're gonna to need to do, first of all, obviously first of all, make sure you've got a backup of your system. And also, if your system isn't broke, don't try and fix it. Generally, fast flashing is only required to add support for newer CPUs. So at the moment of October 2020, currently we're on the end of the 3000 series of CPUs from AMD. So we're looking at the 5000 series coming out soon. So this is gonna be very appropriate for that. So if you have bought this board October, possibly November, and you're waiting for those chips to come out, but you wanna flash the BOSS in advance, you can go ahead and do that without actually having the physical processor. Other things you're gonna need for this is a USB flash drive. Now, for this particular installation, I'll be using this. This is a scan disk. It's a 32 gig drive, but essentially an eight gig or smaller will be absolutely fine. It's a relatively small flash file. You also need a computer that can access the internet to get hold of this. I'll put some links as well in the video description, so you can go straight to the website and get the appropriate BOSS for this particular board. I will also put links for Gigabyte anyway, just so if you've got a different board, you can still get access. So you will need your USB stick, a working PC, laptop, or something to connect to, to actually get it to. Other than that, all you will need is a power supply, which we've got here, the bare motherboard itself, and that is essentially it. You don't need a processor, you don't need RAM, and you don't need a graphics card. So to start with, we'll go onto the computer and we'll download the BOSS and put it onto our flash drive. So I'll put the flash drive in now. Now on your motherboard, you'll find that there is a white USB port on the back. Don't plug it into the blue ones because it won't work. Plug it into the white one. For downloading the BIOS itself, you can plug it into obviously any of these slots, but for actual flashing, it will need to be in that particular slot. So we're on the Gigabyte website here. So this is gigabyte.com forward slash motherboard forward slash A520M-HREV. 10 etc yours may be slightly different depending on if they've updated or not what we want to go to is go to the support section so we'll click on that one and then we'll go down towards the bottom and go into bios and then you'll see a list of the biases that are available so currently this board as it comes out of the factory will generally be set to bios version f.1 there is f.2 f.3 and f10 at the moment, it doesn't say on the website that you do need to do these in any particular order. So we're gonna go straight along and do the F10 BIOS, being that it is the newest version and has the latest support. So all you need to do is click on the cloud icon, which is for downloading. And then it'll start downloading into your downloads folder, depending on the browser you're using. We're using Microsoft Edge, but your browser may ask you where you want it to go. When it's finished, you can click on open file or go to the location you've downloaded it and you'll find that there is a compressed folder. So we'll skip up a level. And what you'll need to do is to right click on the file and then choose extract all. Choose where you want to extract it to. This is gonna be in my downloads folder again. So then we've got our files. So you should have in there four files, one of which is the BAS file. There's an auto exec file, an EFI flash file, and a readme file. So what we're going to do now is get our flash drive ready. So we're going to open up another window, open up File Explorer, and we'll go to this PC. At this point, you want to click on View and choose File Name Extensions and also Hidden Items. Right click on your USB drive and choose the Format option. Obviously make sure there's nothing on it. This does have to be in FAT32. So this is set to the file system, FAT32. So we'll stick with that and we'll do a quick format and click start. You'll come up with an error message or a warning saying this will erase all data. So obviously if there's anything on the stick, make sure you've got it backed up. But if you're happy to go on, click OK. And we've got format complete. So we can close down that window. We don't need that anymore. And we can go back to our decompressed BAS files. And what I'm gonna do is gonna select all of those four files Right click, choose copy, then go to our USB drive, which is empty. Right click again and choose paste. And our BAS file at the top, this is the important bit. You do actually have to rename this file. And it has to be gigabyte in uppercase. So G-I-B-A-B-Y-T-E, then a dot, 
then a BIN in lowercase, and remove any other items that are there. So it's just say gigabyte.bin. What should happy with that? Press enter. You'll come up with a message saying if you change the following extension, it may become unusable. Do you want to change it? Click yes. And just double click or double check rather that it says gigabyte.bin. So we're all good. So now what we can do is dismantle the system in our particular instance, but in your particular case, take out the USB stick and we're going to put it into the drive. So I'm going to strip down this system to get it ready and we'll be back straight away. Okay, so we've dismantled the system and currently we're down to the bare essentials. So we've got the motherboard itself. We've got our 24 pin main power connection and we've got our supplementary EPS power connection, our four pin or eight pin. Depending on your board, you may have a four pin or eight pin. As long as you've got that connected, that's absolutely fine. We've removed the RAM, the processor, the NVMe drive, and also the graphics card. And the only thing we've got plugged in on the back is our USB stick, which is right next to the BOSS flash button. So that is all you need, bare essentials. The key flash button will not work if there is a processor installed or RAM installed or a graphics card installed. So make sure you've got those removed. The key flash is primarily for adding additional capacity or adding additional SKUs to the BIOS so you can actually use a processor. If you want to flash your BIOS and you've already got an up and running system, then you're much better off actually using the QFlash system in the BIOS itself rather than actually pressing the button. So with that said, let's go on with it. So what we need to do is make sure that our power supply is powered on. So we'll flick the power supply on. And at this point, all you need to do is to press and hold the button on the key flash, which is next to the slot there, and make sure a USB stick is installed. And what this will do is this will start up the system. You'll notice the fan will spin up. There isn't any LEDs on the board as such, so you can't really see what's going on. But you'll get to the point where the system will, first of all, it'll reboot. The fan will come back on. It will then flash the boss after it's read it. Then when it's done, when it's completed, the system will completely shut down and the fans will stop spinning on your power supply. Don't touch anything or do anything until the system is completely shut down and the fans have stopped spinning, all that kind of stuff. If you've got a power supply, which has got one of those power sensing features or it doesn't spin up at a certain point, obviously this is gonna be a little bit more tricky for you, but uh, yeah, don't touch it unless it's completely finished. If you're not too sure, then I would leave it for probably about half an hour or so and it should be absolutely fine. Generally, this process will take about five to 10 minutes. So to start with, got our system ready and we'll press the Q flash button. And you'll see the flashing LED, hopefully it's picking up on the camera. If you've got your IO shield and this is actually installed in a system, there is actually a hole in the IO shield, which I can't see in front of me somewhere, but there is actually a tiny little hole in the IO shield just so that LED is visible. So like I said, this will continue flashing until the process is done. If the light stays on solid, that means that something is wrong and it's not working. So again, just let it carry on doing what, it's, what it needs to do. It'll flash for a while and we'll wait for the power supply to do its thing. The key thing here is patience. So now we've got a solid LED briefly and the fan has actually started spinning up on the power supply. So the flashing at the very beginning is basically the system initializing the Q flash system when it's actually flashing a slightly slower rate as it is now that means it's absolutely flashing again the fan is spinning on the power supply this is our only kind of visual recognition that there's something actually happening so we'll leave that to carry on and do its thing so there we go pretty straightforward pretty simple to do Obviously, if you've just bought the motherboard and you're waiting for a processor and you're flashing this, this is super simple. Obviously, if you've got an assembled system with a, maybe a different processor, then certainly you can flash the boss a lot easier without stripping it all down. But it's actually a relatively straightforward process. Renaming the BIOS file is one of the most important things, making sure that your USB drive is formatted FAT32, also very important. And just making sure that the board is completely free of any other distractions, either RAM, GPU, CPU, any USB ports plugged in, is a bad thing, especially like a card reader because it will mess up the boot process, etc. So just make sure it is completely bare board. All you need is your 24 pin power connector, your four or eight pin CPU power connector, and your USB drive installed. But now the system is completely shut down, fan stopped, we're all done, everything's all good. So all we need to do now is rebuild the system and we're ready to go. 
So hopefully that's been helpful to you if you're not sure how the Q Flash button works on the back of your Gigabyte motherboard. If you've got any comments or questions, that's what the comments section below is for. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.